Okay. I need somebody who will raise the standard for Plato. I need someone who will raise the standard for Lego. I need someone who will raise the standard for Lincoln Log. <laughs> and another one for Tinker Toys. Who's gonna who's gonna give a shout out? Who's gonna help? Lego. Lego, we got two Play-Dohs right here. Excellent. Oh, Lego, Lego, I'm sorry, but Cody, Lego, Kayla.
room, which looks like a, a, a small conference room. We can use all of this open area that wraps around. There are two tables on the back side here. They're labeled make space. They have uh, some student work up. And so I ask that you respect that student work. It's graduate student work. They're working very diligently trying to get some projects done. Um, but there are a couple of the make spaces that are available. So check with me if you want. To, these are the ones that have uh, movable gray partitions. Just, just behind these. <laughs> I have skills. <laughs> um, the, uh, can see what else. Uh, we can use this facility right here that has these uh, machines. Two of the machines have our, our dual gate windows. Um, we can use any of the computers in the computer laboratory number 220. We call that one the Nexus. Uh, the one right behind us that I've just put has a couple of dual boots. Uh, uh, that one's called Leo Block. We're standing in the hypercube. Uh, out there we call it the cloud. Um, the, the area with the high top with the tables is called the lab. Uh, there's a few people that have already set up there. Um, there is a, a, a 3D printer on one of the tables in the lab. And it's a little bit twitchy. So I'm going to ask you to uh, keep at least arm's length from it so that, so that we know that it didn't get messed up on our watch. Okay? But the other tables that are in the lab, you're free to use. The tables are on wheels. They can be moved. The chairs are on wheels. They can be moved. Uh, we are actually, we, we had said that we were going to be at 85 people capacity. We're actually at about 105, maybe as much as 110. Um, so I had to get more chairs. Last year when I counted it, we had actually only 85 chairs. That's why I said, let's just cap it at 85. Uh, I had somebody from uh, the, our campus safety come in and say, how many can I actually have here? He said, if no chairs, 200. With chairs, less. So I'm kind of <laughs> So, so uh, we're, at, we're at less. <laughs> All right, so those are the facilities that you can use. Uh, there is a printmaking facility. The doors are locked. There may be students or a teacher coming in during the weekend, but we, we're not allowed to go in there. I, we, we didn't ask for any, any permission to use that. There is a locked lab um, on that side that uh, also will, will just remain locked. Um, I'm trying to think. So what you see, what is out as you walk around this floor, you can use. Uh, if you get tired, Tomorrow there's a nice, there's an art gallery on the ground, not the ground floor, but the first floor. We, we, we have the British system in this building, so when it's the ground floor is zero, and then there's the first floor, and we are on the second floor, technically speaking. Um, and you're welcome to go and visit that gallery. Um, I have asked our facilities people to make an extra pass each day through the building to try and keep us tidy, um, but your assistance in that will be greatly appreciated. Uh, there are classes that need to be held Monday morning. So if we want to look at this as though we're doing no trace camping. On Sunday evening, I'm trying to get us out of here by 5, or at least finish with our presentations by 5, so that we can do cleanup and you guys still have some energy to get home safely. That's important to me, you get home safe. Um, so those, those are those are the in addition to the, you know, keeping the drinks off and food off of the carpeted areas, those are those pretty much the ground rules. No traces, right? So when you leave, it looks like you found it. Um, Sunday late afternoon, there might be some panicked graduate students who come in. Uh, they have presentations bright and early on Monday morning, and they will probably want to make use of the hypercube facility. But we should be done by the time they come in. Um, other questions? I'm trying to think of any other logistical questions we might have. With 100 people, I don't feel that it would be constructive to do a, a pitch process that involves every single person pitching to everyone else. Uh, because we would probably be at it until past midnight. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try to experiment and do uh, an experiment in organic chemistry. <laughs> I want to see if there will be uh, self-organization. Um, if there's somebody who doesn't have a group, please let yourself be known. Don't be shy. You don't have a group. All right. He doesn't have a group. Tommy, I thought you were bringing a posse. They're not coming? All right. 
Tommy's gift is a gifted programmer right here. Um, all right, so Chris will over here in a minute. All right, so the spirit of the event was to be open to working with strangers. Many have come to group to perform because it's comfortable. But let's, let's as we're doing the social socializing exercise, this is part of this. Like, don't don't be a stranger. Get to know each other. Get to know what you're capable of. What you might be able to offer to a group. Um, Ryan Nickel is an audio guy extraordinaire, and he is offering the freelance to groups. Uh, what what specific kinds of audio do you feel like you might? I can do anything you want. Okay. I can do music and sound effects. Um, I can come around to each group when you guys are settled and come talk to you. And I have order sheets. Something you can that shit out for me and we don't have to discuss about it. Um, uh, it is going to be first come, first serve. So. Uh, there's also a bunch of other great audio guys here, so don't just like start being like Ryan. There's lots of good guys. So um, yeah, if you don't see me when you're in your groups, come find me out. If you don't already have a sound guy. So we have we have a second uh, offer from uh, on freelance audio from Nate Madsen, right? Thank you. Um, so uh, on similar terms, so he well, yeah. make himself available to groups uh, and. Uh, at an individual consulting basis. So uh, I'll open music. Artists who don't have groups. Are there artists who don't have groups? Are there groups made only of artists? <laughs> Are there groups made only of game designers? Because I often have artists. All right, so uh, artists, if you find yourself Without uh, a, without uh, without something to do to benefit the group that you're working with, please feel free to offer yourself to other groups to see if, if that was the other thing that is leading me to. This is not a competition. I'm not going to award a best of show. This is a collaborative exercise on, on several levels. Right, so each group is a small collaboration. We are all collaborating together to make this a good experience for each other and ourselves. And then we are all also collaborating at the global level with everybody else who's making games right now. And so I, I don't want you to have to feel protective because you might lose out. So if you if somebody needs help, ask. If you're asked, see if you can offer help. Uh, because we're trying to grow the whole community. We're trying to strengthen the whole game making community here in Colorado. And that's why we do it this way. All right. Um, anything else? Oh, Jet, you have something to say? Yeah. So the first, we didn't all cheer for Raphael. Each of you stopped by and personally thanks him because he works his butt off. And this is one of the biggest IPA events all year. Now we meet every month, so don't let this be your only idea. Make sure you come out and, and check us out once a month, and then we have special events like the picnic every year, Christmas, and all that. And you couldn't have said it better, it does it every year. And it's it's really about coming together and learning and showing other people what you can do and meeting them. Because you can make your own little group and go code in someone's garage anywhere or library, whatever you want to do. This is about getting together and sharing and building games real quick. And uh, it's going to be quick and it's going to be fast. And I'm really excited to be here again this year. The official Global Game Jam play party for the Colorado chapter is now hosted. It's just Google Colorado Video Games, we're the number one hit. And it's going to be at the Microsoft Store again this year. If we grow out of that space, we have a backup space as well, but so far we have that booked. And it's going to be on uh, the Tuesday. Normally we would meet on a Monday of each month. This is the following day. It's going to be on the Tuesday. So hopefully a lot of you can make it. If you can't, you'll be able to look at stuff online. And what that is, is whatever you guys make, you can show it off. And they've got a big custom 110 inch screen there, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, so, show off whatever you make. We also show it off at the end of the... We do, uh, so on, we will actually have less than 48 hours. 
we have more like 40. Uh, on Sunday, by 3 p.m., we need to have uploaded all of the games in their current state, playable or not. Um, so that at 3 p.m., we will start our presentations. Uh, we'll have to see how many groups we end up with, but the presentations should not exceed 10 minutes each. So you're going to have uh, a real fast, uh, fast-paced presentation. And we're going to try to cycle through. We'll get to see them on this luscious large screen uh, in as high a depth as you, as you can get. Um, this is a real bad boy projector, and we can have all of the windows open, and we will have actually glorious color on the screen. Um, so, uh, and we've got a really decent audio set up here, so if you're, if you're working on sweet audio with you, you can probably experience it. Um, so yeah, uh, so that, so hopefully in those, those two hours we can get through those presentations. Now, I've just received a, a wonderful suggestion that maybe after you have managed to settle in and uh, organize yourselves in your groups, the groups present to, each, to us and to each other as a pitch. Just sort of work through it and workshop the idea. So let's let's try that. Um, I have a surprise. In an hour, we should be receiving pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Again, thanks to the, the computer science department who has uh, collaborated with uh, Saza Pizza, which is a small boutique pizzeria just south of campus. <laughs> Uh, and they should be uh, arriving um, at, at uh, 7, maybe a little bit before. So, um, so I had said that tonight dinner was on your own. They might, I don't know, we ordered enough for what we think, 85, so I don't know. <laughs> so then you might need to uh, fill in some gaps afterwards with uh, some of the wonderful ramen that was on the but so let's let's work on uh, for the next until the pizza arrives. Let's work on some some sort of organic group formation, and then think about doing the, the collaborative uh, group pitching after we eat the pizza. All right, we good for that? What's the theme? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you just arrived. The theme is a heartbeat. It's an odd. We were given it to, given it as a as an audio sample. And that I have the sample available if you wish to use it in your game, but it's the conceptual idea of, of, of a human heart. All right? Hey Bill, so I, I just have to ask you. Have you ever done audio? Are you listening to productions? I wanted to swing by and catch up on the gossip. I got you. I'm glad you made it.